Hello and welcome to another Vintage Cube Draft. Um, so what I might do, I'm not sure yet, is because the internet here is so slow, it takes like a whole day to upload videos, like each one. Um, so I might just like post this draft video and just upload the following videos when they happen. Um, I'm just going to try it and see if you guys like it or not. Um, let me know if that's like not good and you'd rather have all the videos come up at once or you'd rather not you know, wait like three days to see a draft of series. Um, that way I can at least get like some content out and we can go from there until I get home. Anyways, this pack, uh, Vampiric Tutor is great. Sphinx's Rev is awesome, Volcanic. I like Wasteland. Hostage Taker is interesting. Dark Confidant's very powerful. I think for me, I'm between Vamp, Volcanic, and Wasteland. I think those are the three most powerful. Um, and given the nature of this cube, I think Vampiric Tutor is just really strong. The fact that you can play it as an instant at the end of your opponent's turn and get any good card in your deck is just so good. But I think it's actually really close with um, Volcanic Island. Just having good mana is so strong. Um, okay, in this pack we have Time Twister, which is okay if we're trying to draft Storm. Emrakul the Promised End is interesting. Uh, I think it's a lot more powerful in Legacy Cube. Though, let's see, it costs... 13's not too hard to hit. Uh, there's Tezzeret the Seeker, which is kind of cool. Some Hollowed Fountain is pretty good. There's some Mono Red stuff. Fatal Push. I mean, the Signets are good. Not as good. Like, I think Blue Red is one of the worst Signet combinations. The ones with Blue in them are very powerful. I think Is It Signet might be the most powerful. Just getting Ramp in Blue is, like, <laughs> really hard to do, and this is one way to do it. Um. I don't know how I feel about Emrakul. I might just take Time Twister as a sweet card. I'm between Time Twister and just a Signet. Because I don't think this is going to wheel. And I feel like the, the lands are going to come around. I would like to have them. Mm, I think I'm just going to grab the Signet though. Probably the correct pick might be Emrakul. But um, it's just so hard to go, like have the draft go poorly when you just have fast mana and broken cards. So even if you don't exactly know what you're doing... Sorry these Planeswalkers aren't showing up. Um, these are Nyssa, World Wicker, and Chandra Flamewalker. Flamecaller, just some really expensive Planeswalkers. Um, but yeah, if you're just doing stuff faster than your opponent, almost all the cards in this cube are broken, so if you just like play a, an absurd 6-drop Planeswalker on turn 3, it's pretty hard to lose. So um, it's not a terrible strategy, and that's why I like just having fast mana, is they power up any... like draft strategy you're going to have, the faster you can get it out, then the more likely you are to win. Um, so here I think it, for the same reason I'm going to take Grim Monolith, two mana taps for three, so it already is kind of like a dark ritual, um, and then if you untap with it you have so much mana. I like Kiki Jiki, he's a little bit less powerful in Vintage Cube than he is in uh, Legacy Cube and other ones, um, but he's still really good, just triple red's kind of hard to cast, but Grim Monolith is great, just so much mana. Oh, uh, okay. Alright. There's a Goblin Welder and a Strip Mine. Um, Elish Norn's pretty great too, especially if you can ramp her out quickly. Um, Lantax and Winter Orb, I don't really know how to feel about them. Lantax, I've seen it work really well, but it's hit or miss for me. I don't think I'm going to be taking any of this nonsense. I don't even know why Sweltering Suns is in here. I feel like Pyroclasm, just double red's really hard to get. Um, so strip, I think, I think we're going to be between Strip Mine and Goblin Welder. Um, <laughs> you may quickly realize the types of decks I like drafting, just <laughs> mess with your opponent. Strip Mine's colorless, and if I'm drafting artifacts, I'm likely to want to play uh, Crucible of Worlds. So I think I'm going to take that. And there was a Wasteland in the first pack. Unlikely that we're going to wheel it, but it can keep it in mind at least. Um, okay, so here we have pretty mediocre pack. Um, Legion's Landing. I'm not going to be playing that. Celestial Colonnade is really slow. Uh, Murderous Cut, I think, is the most efficient card that I'm seeing right now. Lightning Greaves is good with Goblin Welder and Metal Worker if you do go into the artifact style deck. I think this card has the highest upside of all of these. And, like, I, I don't know. <laughs> You're never going to be activating Westvale Abbey, I don't think. This format's just so fast that, you know, the white, this is probably best in like a white weenie type deck, but I think those decks are 
better to just capitalize on like Thalia and strip mine. I'm going to take Lightning Greaves. I don't know if I'm going to play it, but it is an artifact and it goes well in artifact style decks. Uh, Chandra Pyromaster, no. Kozilek is good with a lot of colorless mana. Um, and then there's Badlands and Marshlets if we want to have fixing. But I think Kozilek's sweet in the artifact deck because he's just like a very big way to draw a bunch of cards. He prevents you from decking. Um, he's actually pretty good in Storm as well. So I think I'm going to take him. I'd love to pick up these duels because, again, mana is very important. Ooh, Koldolka Forge Master. Very good with Lightning Greaves. Um, aside from him, there's Commit Memory. Mizium Mortars is okay. I love Force Spike. Um, <laughs> I mean, we're not even in the colors, but just I love this card. I think it's probably a little too powerful for most formats, but it feels great when you get your opponent with it. Um, Rin Wing Mare is another type of card I was saying that I think white is one of the strongest reasons to play in white. You can do like this plus Armageddon, and your opponent just can't play any spells. Um, Smuggler's Copter. I don't know if that's exactly the artifact we're looking for. Revelark is power two or less. Revelark's great, there's so many combos with it. Mm, Ponder this late is interesting as well. Artifacts do like to be blue-red. I might just grab a Ponder. I'm not sure we're going to be playing it, but this is like such a powerful card, especially in a draft deck where you're looking for like very specific one-ofs for a combo. Um, seeing it this late could be a good sign. There's a lot of white, but I mean like... You cast Linval, it's okay. We're trying to do busted stuff. Wow, Wasteland came around. Uh, hmm. I'd love to have Sphinx's Revelation too, because we need, like, if we're going to be drafting big mana artifacts, um, a way to capitalize on that is pretty important, but I think Strip plus Wasteland, then we can just, like, instant pick up any Crucible of Worlds we see. is too good to pass up. Given that, it's looking like we're, rather than being kind of big man, if we have Wasteland and Strip Mine, um, we're more likely to fall into the, like, low to the ground smokestacks type, type of deck. Um, given that, I'm trying to decide if I want Day of Judgment or just Fatal Push. Destroying all creatures could be good. I'm not, I'm not sure about that pick. That one was actually pretty tough. Uh, Chandra Flamecaller seems pretty nice. Um, Moat. I'm not a big fan of Moat. Um, there are some decks it's good in. I don't think this is going to be one of them. So we're just going to take Chandra. Um, Sword of War and Peace. It is an artifact. This deck actually might be able to capitalize on land tax. I don't really like Sword of War and Peace. I'm gonna take Land Tax. We can maybe do some busted stuff. Yeah, see all these cards wield. Um, Legion's Landing. When does it transform? When you attack with three creatures? I guess if we truly are colorless, Westvale Abbey is like a very slow way of us winning. Chandra Parmancer, I guess I'll take. So white-red seems very open. Whether or not we want to go into that is a separate uh, issue. So there's a Tinker, which <laughs> I think we kind of just have to take. It's such a strong card. We don't actually have that many artifacts, though. Um, something to think about. But I mean, Tinker's just such a strong card. With Even if you're just tinkering out, tinkering out a Forge Master, that's great. But if we can find a Blightsteel, I mean, Tinker Blightsteel is a very real win condition. Or Memory Jar is another sweet one. Sundering Titan... There's a lot of high-end artifacts. Um, channel's great. And, hmm. That's another direction we could go. Um, it's the, the mana cost is very prohibitive, but it's really good. Like, you can channel Kozilek or Embercool. But it's just so hard to cast if we're trying to play... I don't think Lantax or Westvale Abbey. I don't think I can play channel in deck that's also playing Stripmine Wasteland. It's just too hard to cast. Um, Glenelendra is excellent. I like Chain Lightning. Hangerback Walker, but we're going to take Tinker. Oh, I need to turn down my volume. Sorry if the sound effects were too loud. Uh, Hedron Archive seems pretty good. Um, we just need mana. Walking Ballista I would also take. Um, but I think that's going to come around. Not that many people want artifacts like this. Um, I like Armageddon. Eureka seems like a trap. I've only won with it like one time ever. 
Frasca Relic, Se Relic Seeker is kind of cool. I love Inferno Titan. Empty the Warrens is kind of fun. But yeah, Hedron Archive, we just need some big artifacts that do stuff. Thran Dynamo. Um, ooh, Sulfuric Vortex. One of my favorite decks in this cube is Mono Red. I know a lot of people hate it, but it just feels so good to go like Goblin Guide into Sulfuric Vortex Fire Blast or something. My favorite deck of that is the Mono Red deck Splashing Ancestral Recall and Time Walk. I've done that a couple times, it's really hard to lose. Um, so Thread Dynamo is great. Arid and Mace I'd like to pick up, but I mean, we're getting mana here. That's what we're doing. Brain Freeze. Dark Ritual. Um, do I even need Plateau? I'm not even really in white or red. I'm kind of just kind of colorless. Um, Signet Gite is actually interesting. I only have two creatures, though. Um, this card is a reason not to play red. I don't know if you've done it, but... Just gains you life, kills all the small creatures. It's a nightmare for creature matchups, which are pretty rare in this cube. So it's not as powerful as it is in, like, Legacy Cube or something. Um, deciding between the Signet or a Plateau, because this doesn't actually fix my mana at all. But I only have two two-mana accelerants, so waiting till turn four to cast, like, a Thran Dynamo seems too slow. Ulamog, the infinite God Pharaoh's gift. What is that doing in here? That seems too expensive to really do much. Um, so we have an Ulamog. So like I could take these cards. The problem is I'd really like for them to be artifacts so I can like tinker them and can build the Forge Master them out. Um, there's Dark Petition, goes pretty well with Vampiric Tutor. It's actually kind of unclear what colors we are. I think right now I would give up all of these red cards to have Tinker with a viable target. So I'm going to try and have my deck be blue-black. Um, the question is, do I want Dark Petition in that deck? I think the answer is no. I might just take Ulamog and try and go as big colorless man as I can. Because it seems relatively open. Wow, this is lagging. It's kind of freaking me out. Um, Doretti's kind of good. Tassiger's okay. The problem is we want as many like artifacts in our graveyard. Not artifacts, just cards in general. Um, but Doretti kind of gives us an out to go into like the Forge Master Tinker plan. It is a bit upsetting that the Goblin Welder didn't come around pack one. So that out is gone. But this is kind of like a pseudo Goblin Welder. And being able to filter cards is actually pretty good in a deck. You know, you just have a bunch of mana, but not necessarily stuff to do with it. Um, okay, Recurring Nightmare is quite bad with Eldrazi. Might just grab a Sacred Foundry. Um, I'd like to play Ojatai. Let's see. Uh, no, I think just having better mana, we can figure it out from there. This might let me splash into Ready or something. Wow, these packs are not amazing. Um, there's a Blood Crypt. What does Bloodbraid Elf get? I don't even have the green to cast it. Is it Charm? Not really. I'm just going to keep taking mana. Um, there's a Chain Lightning, but I think Mana Confluence, like, my mana base looks pretty tough right now, and none of these cards are, like, super exciting, so I'm just gonna keep picking up Mana Fixing when I can. So yeah, Red is very open, but, like, I don't really want to be playing Char, and we're trying to draft a good deck, because all the, like, little to the low to the ground, like, red creatures I'm not really seeing. Um, sure. Sulfuric Vortex Wield. <sighs> Sorcerer's Spyglass. Goes well in the Artifacts deck. <clears throat> Let's see their hand too, which is some valuable information. I don't know if this deck is going to have enough islands to cast Gush. Gush is pretty good with, uh... What's it called? Land tax, though. Um, yeah, we could have had Empty the Warrens plus Reckless Bushwhacker. This draft is not going so well so far. We need a pretty good pack three. I'm just going to take Parallax Wave. Um, okay. High Tide, I think, has higher... Uh, 
No, nah, Dark Petition could be good in this deck, actually. We're, like, not going to be playing High Tide with Strip Mine Wasteland. Okay, now we're talking. This is a pack. Thirst for Knowledge is amazing in our deck. I love Mold Drifter. Sword is great. Uh, sword of Fire and Ice is my favorite sword because it says draw a card. <laughs> um, but we don't have really any creatures to equip it to. Um, Grave Titan's really powerful. Scarab God seems okay. We don't have many kill spells, so getting creatures in the graveyard is not the easiest game plan. I think I'm going to take Thirst for Knowledge. This deck needs card draw for sure. Um, maybe we can wheel Moldrifter or Siege Gang Commander as well. I don't know if we're red or black, but I'm going to take Thirst and I can maybe wheel a Grave Titan. Ooh. Time Spiral? Okay, okay. There's also a Frost Titan. Baleful Strix, but that's more likely to wheel. Uh, because we can just play a really fast Frost Titan. That's usually <laughs> pretty good. Um, yeah, I think I'm torn between Frost Titan and Time Spiral. Maybe I would play Riftwing Cloud Skate. I love this card. Um, Baleful Strix is also interesting. See, how are my win conditions? I just have mana right now. Yeah, I think I need Frost Titan. Karn Liberated. See, these are the cards I'm looking for. I think I just have to take Mirror Battle Sphere. Um, sorry, Karn and Chromox. Given that I have Tinker, I need to like make sure I have a very powerful Tinker target. Um, and this is one of the better ones to Tinker out. Even if they kill it, you have a bunch of little uh, mirrors. <sighs> Karn is so good though. He's colorless. I'd also love Chrome Mox. Course of Portal would be nice too. Actually, there's Inkwell Leviathan there, and I think one of these is likely to come around. Um, and they both work for the Tinker plan. So I'm going to take the Karn and hope to wheel either Chrome Mox, Top, Inkwell, Battle Sphere, Preordain, or Rishadin Port. But it's just so hard to pass up on a Karn. Ancient Tomb and a Treachery, whoa. Um, I think Ancient Tomb is just too perfect for this deck to pass up. I mean, it's just fast mana at no cost of a card. I mean, it's a land, but a land that taps for two is really nice. Treachery is excellent as well. Also a good combo with Ancient Tomb. But there's not too many creatures in this format. Whoa, Mana Flare? What is that? Huh. Huh. That's pretty nice. We could we could mana flare out some Ugins and Ulamogs. Um, trying to decide if that's gonna wheel. We could also just grab the Sphinx of the Steel Wind though. Um, putting back into ready. I have no hopes of casting it, but between Kaldolfa Forge Master, Tinker, and Duretti, I think we can cheat it out, and maybe we can wheel a Phyrexian Revoker. Ooh, Tezzeret. That's what we're looking for. Um, I love Wheel of Fortune. This isn't the deck for it. Toxic Deluge is pretty nice too. Repeal is fun. But I think this might be shaping up to be a Tezzeret deck. I'd like to get at least one or two more one, and by more I mean zero or one mana artifacts, like a Mox. I know we can't get any anymore, uh, but a Mox would make this deck so good. Lodestone Golem, he's good if you can, like, you know, play a Mox and cheat him out, but when you're just playing him on turn 3, he's not that great. We're just going to grab a Tezzeret, though. Kind of cements the fact that we can... Uh, what am I even saying? Gives us an extra win condition. There we go. Um, so now it's between Chandra, Torch of Defiance, and Fire Ice. The extra mana off Chandra will actually be very relevant if we're in red. Um, which right now we only have Blood Crypt, Mana Confluence, Boros Signet. So hitting double red seems quite hard. But it's either that or Fire Ice. You know, this gives us some early interaction. I just don't think I'm casting. Whoa, Gilded Lotus. Now we're talking. Yeah, I think with that we probably have enough mana to play at least Kozilek, maybe Ulamog. A uh, little Jace going this late is interesting too. Same as Scroll Rack, but Gilded Lotus is so powerful. Um, so there's no good fixing for us. We'll just take a Siege Gang. 
Yeah, we're just gonna take Siege King. I don't think I'm gonna play him, but... What? Has so nobody read this card? So good. Um, Hazard's... I like that it's in the cube, it's a very strong card. But I think we're just gonna be cloud skating. Maybe we won't be playing it. Rishid and Port. I love Braids, Cabal Minion too, it's so strong. Uh... Question is, is Leyline of Sanctity is an uncastable sideboard card better than Rashad and Port? No, it's not. Seething Song, I actually might play. Oh, wait, Faithless Looting goes well with just Doretti, but Doretti kind of goes well with himself anyway. I'm going to take Seething Song. Well, there's a Mana Flare. I can take advantage of that more than my opponent. I don't know if I'm going to start it, but I might side in Mana Flare if I see my opponents playing... Whoa, what did I just do? I don't want to skin render. Um, I might side in Mana... Why are these so small? Uh, mana Flare if I see my opponent doesn't have much ways to use so much mana. Sorry, I'm getting like 100 text messages. Vacation's hard. <laughs> okay. Um... Oh, we have Chandra Flamecaller too. I think I'd try, like to stray away from double red. In fact, maybe Doretti is just too hard to cast. Just notice that Mer Battle Sphere didn't come around. Or Inqua Leviathan, unless I just missed them. Hmm. Because we could cut black. Definitely not playing Dark Petition. Um, then we could play Seething Song, Mana Flare Main Deck, Chandra Flame Caller, Chandra Power Master, maybe? She doesn't give you mana. I kind of wish I had the one that gave you mana. Uh, I guess Riftwing is kind of cute. So I could just be like straight red blue. Hmm. Because, like, her zero is cool to, like, draw cards, but it's really tough because I have, like, these guys as my win conditions, and I don't really want to exile them. Oh, I just realized how good Lightning Greaves is with uh, some of these guys. Also good with Frost Titan. So we have Forge Master and Doretti to make Sphinx of the Steel Wind work, and Tinker. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine artifacts to tinker. That seems reasonable to me. Uh, this is actually a really tough deck to build because I'd like to play Tezzeret and Vamp, but I just don't think that's the way. Like, I just won't have good mana if I do that. I have one Blood Crypt, and then everything else is colorless. I think Waste and Strip. Port, Confluence, like I have so much colorless mana that, yeah, I think given the colorless mana I can't play Chandra, she's just too expensive. Um, so this is 24 cards and a lot of mana and really very little card draw. But I could cut this, go to 23, 17 lands, with Strimmine and Wasteland I think seems good enough. Really glad I picked up this Ponder to be honest. And we just have to play basics? Ugh. Um, so as far as colored sources go, I have one red source on the Boros Signet. Mana Confluence is red and blue. Gilded Lotus kind of counts, but not really. I guess we theoretically can cast Sphinx of the Steel Wind, but it's very unlikely. I'm going to put in Mortars for Riftwing. Um, I think we just need to kill small creatures. We don't really need extra win conditions, so um, this coming out later is not that relevant, and it helps make our mana better. Okay, um, so let's see. Don't need any swamps or plains. Six and six between the two. What does that look like? It's not the worst, to be honest. 
I give this deck like a 6 out of 10. It really needs like a, a Mox or a Black Lotus or a Mana Vault. Some 1 mana plays to make the deck way more powerful. Also, Crucible of Worlds would have been awesome. I'm really... I don't, I'm pretty sure I didn't see it. Sometimes I just miss cards. Um, but I'm pretty sure I didn't see it because I would have snapped that up. Um, and the only pick that I'm not so sure about is Karn. But maybe. Anyway, uh, those who made it this far, just a reminder. I'm just going to upload this as it is. And then upload the, the games as I play them and they actually upload. So you might see this and be like, where are the feature matches? And they might come up in like an hour or two. And we're just going to see how this works. If you guys hate it, I'll never do it again. But, you know, you got to try stuff sometimes. So we'll see you next time.